All right, welcome. Um, here I'm basically just going to go over some general observations I've made um, in my study of this. Um, not going to get into it a whole lot. This is kind of a bird's eye view. Most of this stuff I'll cover again a little bit later. I just want to make some uh, light on observations before I get really into the meat of the subject. Um, first thing I want to say is the, the whole reverse grip thing, I think, requires a, a completely unorthodox and uh, unusual way of looking at um, both the style and the actual weapon itself. Um, the, uh, the thought on movement, attacking, parrying, tactics, um, the, whole, the whole thought process behind the entire system is, is unorthodox, is something that is not, uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't always fall into your standard, um, your standard metrics, if you will. A um, couple other observations, hilt size, I've noticed is generally irrelevant. Um, most of the stuff that I've come up with I can perform just fine with. This is an initiate hilt, this is a Dominic V3 with about an inch and a half extra from a uh, catalyst pile. Um, so hilt size I don't think is really that big of an issue. I have noticed blade length is. Um, the longer your blade, the more cumbersome it becomes. It's not impossible. It can be done. This one's got a 36 inch heavy grade. This is a 32 inch mid grade. Um, personally, I prefer the shorter blade. Um, not so much for weight as for um, it, like I said, it's less cumbersome. Um, that being said, either one works. You know, find out, find what's best for you if you uh, if you decide to pursue this, figure out something you like. Um, I'm going to do most of my demonstrations with this one just because I'm inside and it's easier to use indoors. Um, okay, the reverse grip it relies. It, it, one of the main things that at least for me required um, some different thinking is the reverse grip requires a lot of non-blade based attacks. Now what I mean when I say that is it's going to rely a lot on striking with the pommel. Um, it's going to rely a lot on throws, grappling, um, offhand punches, elbows, kicks, knees, that sort of thing. Um, yes, the blade is going to be used to attack, definitely, but it's not always the best option for attack. Um, this is one of the reasons why I say that a lot of the stuff I'm coming up with here is, unfortunately, probably illegal in most sparring circles, which is fine. And, you know, again, like I said, I'm making this to be combat-worthy, not sparring-worthy. I understand there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, the other thing is, as far as the blade goes, uh, fall, the false edge, now granted we're using lightsabers, so there technically is no false edge, um, but the false edge is used... Um, I won't say extensively, but it's, it, it is used a little bit. Um, one of the main uses I'll, you'll see later on uh, during the third acceleration of the Dulan I've created. Um, the other thing is it's going to make a lot of use of feints, misdirection, um, footwork, that sort of thing. Um, think of it more as uh, chess. It requires a lot of tactics, a lot of forethought, a lot of um, predicting your opponent's movement. Now, I know that's not always possible, and especially if your opponent knows this, they can uh, use that to your advantage by, again, them using feints and that sort of thing. Um, so again, it, like I said, it's a lot of chess, a lot of a lot of mental activity, a lot of uh, precognition almost. Um, that being said. It is possible. It's difficult, but possible. Um, the other thing is hard par hard parries and blocks. You know where you just simply stop the other uh, the opponent's strike. Virtually impossible. I'm not going to say it's completely impossible. I, I subscribe to the theory that nothing is completely impossible, um, but it is very, very, very difficult and generally not the best. Um, not the best idea for reasons that many people have gone over before. I know a lot of uh, the TPLA have um, gone over the uh, the basic grip things as far as like disarming and stuff, pulling the saber out this way. That's one of the main weaknesses, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to work around. Um, knowing that weakness, 
gives me a chance to um, modify some some tactics and, and work, work work with it, try and find strengths to go with that rather than just simply saying, oh, well, it's, you know, it's weak, so I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, one thing that I've discovered works is uh, redirection. Um, instead of taking and just making a hard block, redirecting. Um, and this is a lot of the concepts from the bind, um, but the difference, the main difference being that I, 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 I have a technique for it I call uh, driving the blade. I just made that up because it, it helps me to remember exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, the main difference between this and you know a normal bind and a, and a forward grip, in a reverse grip, you really don't want to be in a bind. The longer you're in a bind, the more um, vulnerable you become. So you want to be in a bind as short as possible. Um, now granted, I'm, that's probably true also with the forward grip, but it's especially true with the reverse grip. Um, some basic strengths, I'll go over some strengths and weaknesses. Um, basic strengths, it's quick, um, unorthodox movements. Um, not necessarily any quicker than, than your standard forward grip movements, but they're different. They're, they're just as quick and they're enough different if executed um, that they can be uh, at least, at the very least, I think useful for um, off-balancing an opponent, if not finishing a duel. Um, and depending on stance and angles, um, I think Master Bornock mentioned once that geometry is very, very important. Um, I'm discovering that is absolutely true. Depending on stance and angle, uh, defense is very, very quick. Um, it's uh, very good when used with uh, jar cut. You know, two, two grips, two reverse grips. Works very well, or as they demonstrated, one reverse and one forward. Same thing. Um, let's see. A lot of the uh, tactics um, used are tactics that aren't generally seen, or at least in my limited experience, I have not generally seen. I don't, I don't see a lot of uh, forms acti actively look for ways to use the pommel as a weapon. Um, and that's one of the things that I've been doing here. Um, rather than saying, hey, your blade's going to be your main weapon, and oh, by the way, maybe sometime eventually you can use the pommel. No, I'm, I'm actively looking for ways to use the pommel as a weapon. Um, main weaknesses? Uh, blocking. Period. Um, and now, not so much um, overall, uh, but definitely hard blocking, stopping the blade, being able to uh, keep it, you know, being able to prevent a powerful strike from just coming straight through. There's more to that than simply just stopping the strike. Um, depending, and this echoes one of the strengths, depending on stance and angle, defense can be very, very slow. Um, and I'll go over this later on when I start talking about some of the guard stances. Um, and then the number one weakness that I found that nobody, as far as I can see, has uh, talked about yet is... I, I shouldn't be saying this because I'm going to be using the form, and I don't want you guys to know this, but the number one weakness is not a thrust at the center line. It's a thrust at the leading shoulder. Because, and I'll go over this a little bit here, if you're here, a thrust at your center line, you can move a little bit, you know, parry, things like that. A thrust at your leading shoulder is very, very difficult to... Uh, to, to handle, to get out of the way of. Your, your weapon is down here. It's got a long way to travel to to knock that thrust offline. By the time it gets there, the thrust is already going to land. Um, it's, you know, this shoulder movement, moving it isn't easy enough to get you out of the way in time. Um, same if you're in, and you'll see this one again. Here, you know, you can bring your weapon up, but by the time you bring your weapon up, it's already hit you. Um, so here, you know, movement is difficult. So um, the biggest major weakness of the reverse grip I've discovered is that thrust at the leading shoulder, um, whichever shoulder they decide to lead with. Um, so 
that's just some general observations that I found. Um, hopefully, maybe uh, get some, you know, gets the gears turning, gets a little bit of thought going. Um, again, I'll expand on a lot of this stuff a little bit later on, and we'll go from there. Thank you very much.